It is December 16th here in Houston. It's about 65 degrees outside. It's a beautiful fall slash winter day. And I'm out here checking my hives. I do it usually the third Monday of every month. And here I'm checking for two things. Checking for the health of the hive and if they have enough honey stores. At this time of the year, they're not gonna be storing any honey. And if they've got plenty of honey and have a honey super on it, like this one here or this one over there, and they're two brood boxes deep, like these two over here, then I'm gonna remove the honey super and put in some Apigard mite treatment. I do this once or twice a year. You wanna do it after the honey flow, but since I'm in Houston and it's warm all the time, the bees are constantly making honey. So around December, end of November, they're stopped making honey for the most part, and I can treat them for mites. Here in this hive, this was my weakest hive, so I broke it down to a smaller hive. I've got a, a full deep and then a honey super, which is a medium. And I wanted to make sure that they have plenty of honey in here to make it through the winter, which isn't going to be very hard. As I go through this hive, I see they have plenty of honey. People think I'm nuts to harvest honey in November, December, but when I see that my beehives have so much honey inside of them, they do not need it. Because this hive has one deep and a honey super, I'm not going to be harvesting any honey from here because I don't want to reduce the size of this hive. But if these two hives over here are in good condition, I will harvest the honey from here. I do that for two reasons. Uh, one is to reduce the amount of space that they have to keep warm. And secondly, because they don't need the honey because there's so much honey down here, so I'm going to remove the honey. That way the honeycomb that I want to harvest is removed when I add the Apergard mite treatment. So these are completely 100% full on all sides. So this hive is ready for me to add some Apergard treatment. I'm gonna check below this box and see how things are going down there. I don't see any eggs in the upper box, which I would not expect, but I hope to see some down below, knowing that there's gonna be a dramatically reduced amount of egg laying during the winter. I'm down in the lower brood box right now. I've opened it up and removed one frame and I've noticed that most of the bees are over here, so this is where I'm gonna assume I'm gonna find the queen and also any larvae or eggs. Over here, this, I'm gonna assume this is gonna be pretty empty, and that's the case. As a matter of fact, the first frame is completely empty on both sides, as you can see, which is fine because they're going through winter and eating their food, but they have plenty of food stores up above, so I'm not concerned at all. If there were no honey down here at all, I wouldn't be concerned because there's so much above but I'm assuming there will be some more honey as I get closer to this section right here. And they'll use that honey for feeding and for feeding the babies. One thing I am noticing is this weird buildup of wax down here in the corners. I haven't seen this on other hives before, so I don't know what to think about it. If you know what this is, let me know. I can pull this right off. It's like over the top of the comb, and there it comes off. So I don't know if they just got too much propolis and don't know what to do with it or what this is. But if you have any comments or know what this is, have any experience, please comment below. I'd like to learn. Just as I'm trying to help you learn about beekeeping, I'm also learning. It's a lifelong learning experience. So any comments and help would be appreciated. Yeah, I, I think it's propolis. It just comes right off. Here I'm on frame four from the right hand side on the bottom and as you can see we've got wet honey here so even though it's the middle of December they still are storing some honey you gotta love being in Texas and living in a housing development where there always seems to be some kind of food nectar falling around for these bees I knocked all the nurse beads off just so you can see that we do have larvae here this is capped larvae and I can also see some open larvae so this is all I need to see is that I know that I've got an active queen in here. Again, it is winter, so she's going to be laying very, very few eggs. I know that she's there and she'll be ready to start laying a whole new batch of babies come spring. Here's the AP guard here. I have the 10 pack. This is a convenient way for me to use it. Here I have this opened up inside the hive. I'm going to place this between the bottom brood box and the honey super because I know that's where the majority of the bees are going to be and they'll be able to get access to it. I want to make sure this is flat enough so they can get access to the sides. As you can see, I've left the lid on here because there is some Apigard on here. Directions say to use it below 109 degrees and above 60 degrees. So we're right on with the application here. 
And of course the bees keep the hive at a constant 92 or 95 degree temperature anyway. So now I'm going to go ahead and button up this hive and check the other two hives. Okay, that hive is buttoned up and I'll come back in two weeks when it's another warm day. Clear skies, no wind, above 65 degrees. And check to see if they've eaten all the apigard. If they have, I'll give them the second application. You should do two applications, one following the other. Just follow the instructions that come with the product. Okay, I'm on to the second hive now. And I've checked all the frames in the Honey Super. This is a very typical frame as I've gone across the hive. It's 100% capped on both sides and it's probably 90% filled. This is exactly what I'm looking for in order to harvest. When I remove this and I see that they have plenty of stores in the two brood boxes below, then I will harvest this honey. I've just removed the honey super and I'm seeing a lot of wax here and I'm seeing that they pulled it out quite a bit. So I'm assuming I'm going to see a lot of honey in here which means I'll be able to harvest the other honey and they'll have plenty of honey to get them through the winter. Let's take a look. This is the second frame and as you can see it is packed with honey. It is completely loaded on both sides. I'm seeing that all the way across the top brood box. So I'm definitely going to be harvesting the other honey and they will definitely have more honey than they can consume over the next few weeks. I'm on frame five on the top brood box so I'm in the center of the box. I have eight frames in my boxes and as you can see right in the center here I've got some brood. Cat brood and some uncapped brood. What does that mean again? I've got a queen. She's laying. So we're in good shape. I actually don't need to go any further through this hive because I know everything is good. Let's go ahead and give them some Apigard mite treatment and close it up. This frame is frame number four counting from the left and this is a pretty typical frame from below. The majority of the frame is empty but there is some brood and there is some honey on it. And so the queen is using the bottom brood box for laying the majority of her eggs. This is going to be an explosive great healthy hive come spring. I'll take the honey super off the top, process that honey, leave the other brood box that was full of honey back on top of here and they will have more than substantial supplies to really build up this hive come spring. I'll be able to easily split this hive and help a good friend start his beekeeping adventure. I'm in the honey super in the third hive and I have never seen this before but I think this hive has been robbed. You can see where the honey used to be in this comb and it's all the way across this honey super. You can see where it's been viciously torn up. The comb is all torn up and every drop of honey is gone. Look at that. It's the same on all of these frames inside of here. So obviously I'll be removing this frame to reduce the size of the hive so they don't have to heat it so much. Either they've been robbed or they were really, really hungry. Last time I checked this box, it had a lot of honey in it and a lot of capped honey. It's completely gone. I'm down into the top brood box and I'm seeing the exact same thing. I think this hive has been robbed by the middle hive over here. I think that's why there's so much honey in there. And this colony may be gone. And this is the uh, good example of one is none and two is one. Because if I had only had one hive here and another hive had come and killed it, I would have no more beehives. I'll have to get down to the bottom brood box and see if I see any eggs. But this hive may be done. Okay, here, um, I think this is the telltale sign here. I got into this other frame and there are there is capped larvae but as I open up the cap all the bees are dead inside and there are no nurse bees on here. So I think the only bees inside of this box here are robber bees. So it may be time to completely remove this box. We'll continue looking down below. I found the same situation with the frames at the bottom brood box but look what I found at the very bottom. It is a pile of dead bees. I have no idea what caused this hive to die, but it is certainly dead and it needs to be removed. So I'll take care of that. Looks like I've got two hives left for the winter and I'll be building up a new hive for next spring. And that is beekeeping. 
From what I can tell, this happened recently. I don't see any indication of wax moths on any of the frames in any of the boxes. I'm guessing this happened in the recent past. And I'll just take these out, put them all in the freezer, kill any wax moth eggs or hive beetle eggs, and get them ready, cleaned up for spring. There we have it, the last two remaining hives. I recently watched a documentary on beehives and they said the average beekeeper loses 33% of their hives every year. And for any other business that would be traumatic, but for beekeeping all you have to do is split a hive and then you've got your new hive back. So I guess I'm keeping about average. I lost 33% of my hives this year and next year I'll build it back up. So obviously I won't be harvesting as much honey the next year but I will be able to build enough hives to help pollinate the garden and my neighbors flowers and their gardens too. I think I may have caused the problem by when the weather got cold and the food resources got low I did not put the entrance reducers on all the hives and therefore left open a weaker hive next to a strong hive and that hive came over and uh, took advantage of that hive and I think that's what killed that hive. So something you may consider doing is as the weather gets cooler, put an entrance reducer on your hives to help your hives protect their stores. This is a wiser LDS prepper reminding you, if ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. And if you haven't started beekeeping yet, I highly encourage you to do so. It's a great hobby with rich rewards.